This lecture is going to be about introducing you to the different categories of decimal numbers and also introduce you to complex numbers. Numbers evolve out of necessity. So the first set of numbers is the counting numbers which evolved because people wanted to keep track of their sheep and so on. So to count, basically. So that's why they're called counting numbers. This notation is called set notation. This is uh, capital N is used to represent natural numbers. The two curly brackets are enclosing the elements of the set. These are called elements of the set separated by the commas. So one, two, three, four, five, and the dot, dot, dot represents that the numbers go on uh, infinitely. The next set of numbers was needed because we wanted to represent the concept of nothingness, which is zero or shunya. And that concept of nothingness along with natural numbers represented whole numbers. We use the letter W to represent whole numbers. Notice the set of natural numbers is a subset of whole numbers. And subset just means that all of the natural numbers are also whole numbers. All right, next set of numbers is called integers. And the set of integers consists of all the whole numbers that you had before along with their negative counterparts. You might be wondering why we use the letter Z to represent integers. And that comes from the word Zahlen in German, which means numbers. And why did we need the integers? They came into existence when you wanted to keep track of a more complex society where you have borrowing and debt. So for example, even now in business, you might represent a uh, debt of $50 as negative 50. All right, then comes the set of fractions, which the Greeks thought represented all numbers. And to uh, most people's surprise, that's not quite the case. There is numbers that are also not rational numbers. But Q for quotient, and they thought that we could describe everything by quotient of numbers. So A over B, that's how you read this. This is a different notation than here, so we're going to go through it. We say A is a numerator, B is a denominator. So all numbers of the form numerator over denominator, this vertical bar means such that. This means B not equal to 0. When you put a bar through something, it means not equal. So A, all fractions with denominator non-zero where numerator, denominator, are integers are called fractions. We can also represent rational numbers as decimal numbers. We'll see how to do that in some later uh, lectures. They are either terminating decimals, so finite number of digits, or non-terminating with repeating pattern, like 4.3 bar. So all decimal numbers with terminating decimal notation or non-terminating repeating pattern are called rational numbers. We say irrational numbers are complement of rational numbers or all numbers that are not rational numbers, all decimal numbers that are not rational numbers are called irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are all decimal numbers that are non-terminating with no repeating pattern, or like square root 2. So the set of rational and irrational numbers together form the set of real numbers or decimal numbers. So all decimal numbers are real numbers, and then some are rational, and the others are irrational numbers. If you look now, that means that all natural numbers are real numbers, all natural numbers are whole numbers, all natural numbers are integers, and all natural numbers are fractions. How do I say 2 is a fraction? I can say 2 over 1, 4 over 2, all those are 2. So all natural numbers are all of these labels that you see here. It's a whole number, it's an integer, it's a rational number and it's a real number. 
This is important to understand the words of what they mean, the categories of numbers, and how to interact in between them. All right, so now the new set of numbers, we're going to call them the set of complex numbers. So just having real numbers was not enough. People realized that, and they formed a set of numbers called complex numbers, which are of the type A plus BI, where A and B belong to real numbers. So any number of the form A plus BI, where A is called the real part, B is called the imaginary part, what is that i? That i is the value of square root negative 1. Or you can think of i to be a number whose square is negative 1. We know that no real number square is going to give you a negative value. And so i is an imaginary number. And we can write i, uh, we can use i for square root negative 4, for example, which can be written as 2i because square root 4 is 2. So all negative square roots uh, can be written by using the letter i. The i is not a variable, but we use a variable to represent an imaginary number. So remember, i is a number. It's a complex number, an imaginary number. So in the number 3 plus 2i, 3 is the real part, 2 is the imaginary part. So this is an example of a complex number that is not a real number. 31 is a real number, and is it a complex number? Yes, because I can write that as 31 plus 0i. So if you have 0 imaginary part, then all real numbers are complex numbers. So to make sure you understand the hierarchy and how the numbers are nested within each other, sometimes a Venn diagram, uh, which is basically a pictorial representation of what we just did, might help. So we started with counting or natural numbers. Then we had whole numbers. So 0 is a whole number that is not a natural number. Integers, you can think of negative 2 as an integer, but it's not a whole number or a natural number. Then the set of rational numbers, which was all fractions or terminating decimals or non-terminating decimals with repeating pattern. So for example, 4 thirds is a rational number, but it's not an integer or a whole number or a natural number. And irrational numbers are non-terminating decimals with no repeating pattern. And then that basically forms the set of real numbers or decimal numbers. So rational and irrational numbers together form real numbers or decimal numbers. And then we have the set of complex numbers where we have numbers of the form 3 plus 2i. And all real numbers are complex numbers with imaginary part 0, but not all complex numbers are real numbers, like the number we just talked about, 3 plus 2i. All right, so now we're going to do a practice problem. We're going to give you numbers, and then you can categorize them whether they are whole numbers, integers, rational or irrational number, real number, complex numbers. This will solidify your understanding of what we just learned. So please pause the video here for at least three minutes and attempt to categorize these numbers on your own. And that way, we can check the answers together. So really do pause, because we're trying to train you to work on your own without getting flustered or without being judgmental. This is good training for you so that you develop the patience and tenacity that is required to do mathematics. So go ahead and at least spend three minutes thinking about what you're going to do. If you get stuck, go back and look at your notes or rewind the video. So you're on your own for three minutes now. All right, so if you really did attempt for three minutes and you were still stuck, let's go over how you would attempt this problem. If you got it, that's awesome. And if you did not try for three minutes and you just simply fast forwarded it, just know this is for your own good. And if you are not following the directions that we're giving you, you may not get the right training to succeed in the class. All right, so let's go over the answers. 
So take a look at negative 70. Since it has a negative, it's not a whole number, but it is an integer. And because it's an integer, remember integer was on the inner circle when we were doing the Venn diagram, which means automatically it's going to be rational number, real number, and complex number. Let's take a look at 6i. Since it has an i in it, so it's none of the whole number integer, rational, real, but it is a complex number. What about 57 over 45? Fraction, fraction automatically makes it rational. Because it's rational, it's automatically real number and complex number. What about this number here? Remember we said the number was 141, 441, 4441. So every time you keep adding extra 4, so that is a pattern but it is not a repeating pattern like 414141. So that makes it an irrational number. Because it's a rational number, it automatically will be a real number and a complex number. What about this one here? Similar to the 6i, because it has an i in it, it's none of these, but it will be a complex number. So there are more homework problems for you to do in this respect. But let's just do one more together just to make sure. So again, pause the video here. This time we will trust that you can pause on your own and do the problem and come back and check. All right, assuming you have come back, we have square root 4, which is 2. So that is a whole number. And that automatically would mean it's all of these other ones. Square root 31 cannot be simplified, so it automatically will be irrational number, and that will give you real and complex automatically. Here we have a terminating decimal point with a negative number, so that automatically will make it a rational number, and automatically then real and complex. Here we have a decimal number with a bar on the head, which means it's 0 0.1717 repeating. So a non-terminating with repeating pattern would mean that it is a rational number, real number, complex number. Here we have a square root 2, which cannot be reduced. It is a fraction, but it has a square root 2. So automatically, it will make it irrational, and then real and complex. So rewind the, this part again if you were stuck on it. And otherwise, if you got it, Continue on, please.